having Ms. Balaji. And Thank I you. And speaking on the panel. Uh, given your experience in the political sector, uh, what has been some of your major takeaways from the panel discussion? Well, it's fine. It's a, in terms of ESG, today it's a buzzword, especially post-COVID. Right, you're talking about ESG, yes. yeah. Uh -huh. So it's a buzzword. It's supposed to be very cool, but thanks to the COVID, there was a dramatic shift which has happened, and uh, everybody is woken up today. And there is a holistic measures from everybody, whether it's investors who are wanting to look at companies who are actually involved deeply into ESGs principles embedded in their business models, or for that matter, even consumers who are not wanting to engage with industries who are actually not looking at ESG models. So it's all both ways. So ultimately, it's the companies who are wanting and willing to, you know, get into this rationale of ESG and do something about it. But having said that, the companies still are a little not wanting to forego their short term capital, uh, short term profitability, because ESG would mean only long term strategic plans. So that's my answer. Yeah. I would totally yeah. agree with you, with you, but I believe that it'll, it'll take some more time you know, I mean, to sell down to the systems to become mature, the processes to evolve. Uh, in all of the processes, how do you look at the role of, um, let's say, GCs, uh, ESG experts in the companies, um, inside councils? How do you look at the role of uh, responsible people in the process? It's a gradual shift, like you just now said that it is definitely a gradual shift. There is a shift happening and it is certainly very progressive, I must say. As GCs, it becomes very difficult to balance the uh, budgetary allocations between trying to, you know, uh, fall towards the ESG and uh, mitigating risk and, you know, highlighting it, certainly. But I think uh, um, companies, again, as I said, are raising up to the fact and also appreciating the internal GCs who proactively take steps and give them the vision what the world needs, what the consumer needs, what the market needs. And India today has fared better, I would say, because in the panel back there, we were discussing where have we come as a country today. Not really a big change, but there is a change because I see, especially coming from my own industry, whether it is ethanol, which is blended in petrol, whether it is the power sector, uh, our own Ministry of Power is encouraging us that compared to solar, wind, any other energy, we're given incentives, we are being drawn at parallel levels. So there is a shift happening. But as I said, it's very gradual, but I'm uh, optimistic to say so. Yeah. <laughs> Plus one, I totally agree with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we talk about um, accumulating a lot of data, yeah. um, you do a lot of research, a lot of papers, studies, all of this. Uh, how do you look at the DPDP? Uh, we talk about data protection. Yeah, on, yeah. But uh, we know that there can be very, very secured uh, programs, secure platforms that are being hacked, and that's very unfortunate. How do you look at this evolving? Definitely, there needs to be a stronger reg regulation because we are just evolving and I hopefully as a country, we're learning from European data regulations and other countries. And uh, we are in the process of embedding because it's just changes and amendments which are happening. And we're learning out of it, as we say, maybe a couple of years down the line, we have a very strong and a robust regulatory framework in line. But uh, until now, yes, there is not a strong framework which we have as of yet. Uh, and for EP ESG, we do need a standardization, which certainly, again, that's a need of the hour, I certainly feel, which is a must, again. So, yeah, that's for me. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.